Well, virtual churches, I'd like to start off today with a fine sight. Ta da! Back together again. Our friends once more. It turned out it was all a misunderstanding. See, Chaz thought I was playing Dave, what more than um, I was playing on him. And Dave thought I was playing Chaz more than I thought on him. And it was just one of those misunderstandings. And if only they talked to each other. Because communication, so often, that's what's at the heart of our, our disagreements, isn't it? Because we don't actually voice them. We don't bring them into the... In fact, after a bit of time, it becomes harder to voice them because... Well, we get a bit in ground, a bit entrenched in our attitudes, and uh, it becomes the longer we leave it, the harder it is to to sort everything out. So, how wonderful to see Chaz and Dave reunited once more. Uh, don't forget, guys, music is about harmony. So the two of you, you can do things together that no one can do on their own. Well, all that, of course, is by, away, by way of introduction to our virtual church number 147, which is about blessed are the peacemakers. And this also comes with a promise. It says, happy are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Well, the person telling us this, making this wonderful promise about the blessing on the peacemakers, is none other than the Son of God himself. So it's trying to tell us, I think, that if we're peacemakers, we are in some way resembling him. We're taking up the things that are on his heart as the Son of God, and we're putting to action the things that are his agenda, why he came to the earth in the first place. So I'm going to read a little bit for you. It's one of my favourite bits. In fact, I often quote this in the piece uh, in church, on Sunday church, um, when we've been open. And this is describing the peacemaking ministry of Jesus. Because we said, haven't we, we made a discovery as we're going through these Beatitudes. In so many different ways they describe Jesus, what his values were, what his mission was, what he was trying to achieve, and who he is in his heart, and so many of them, the meek, the pure in heart, uh, all these things remind us that, that Jesus identifies with us and that he wants us also to come to reflect aspects of his way of life. So here's what, what it has to say here. First of all, this is a passage from Ephesians chapter 2 which has been talking about how Jew and Gentile were separated and at odds with each other, and certainly in the case of the Gentiles, at odds with God. And quite often, of course, if we read through our Old Testament, we find that's true of the Hebrew people too. It's all of us, really, in the same boat, at war with God, and therefore finding ourselves in the insecurity and anxiety that comes from being cut off from God, that we are at odds with one another. And then it says, but now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. For he himself, this is Jesus, is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace. And in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who are far off, and peace to those who are near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. Consequently, you are no longer aliens and strangers. Jesus comes as a peacemaker. 
he is our peace in fact he goes to to a further dimension with peacemaking but he makes peace through his blood on the cross and because he divides uh, or rather breaks down the barrier that divided us uh, from God then the barrier between us and one another is gone as well if we were united with God how can we be divided from one another what we have in common in God is infinite is far vaster than anything else we might come to quarrel about anything else we think is so important it's worth uh, falling out over well how can it be more important than God himself and of course that's why we have the peace in our communion service even if we just have to do it by British sign language peace be with you well sometimes I, we use this for our sign language because we're not terribly uh, good at remembering exactly how to do it but to share the peace means that we really understand that we can't come to God while there's divisions between us how can we want to be one with God when we're divided from the people that God also loves and that he is also one with it cannot be that's why we need to recognize the peace of Christ that he brought through his cross that broken body that blood poured out we have to recognize that peace with one another and yes I know it can be a bit artificial and oh it's the one moment in the entire week for when for 60 seconds uh, we say we're at one with each other have we dug deep have we really touched that peace of the Lord deeply enough to actually make us one with each other and that perhaps is one of the reasons why Christians have been at the forefront of peacemaking yes I know we get blamed a lot for wars just have a look through the really big wars the ones in the 20th century industrial wars and look at who the people were who fought them uh, there were certainly um, in the Second World War Nazism that wasn't religion that was about racial supremacy uh, in fact they suppressed the cross from German classrooms denied that Jesus was Jewish and decided no churches would be allowed in the lands they conquered in the East once they colonized them so the very anti-religion um, Stalin well he killed far more people even than Hitler deliberately starving his own people to death he was an atheist that's what communism teaches militant atheism so was Mao Zedong who killed even more of his fellow beings with than, than Stalin three of, of the greatest murderers in history and what do they have in common rejection of religion rejection of God that's what's that's what motivated them and it took away the the moral barriers that tell people it's wrong to go murdering one another those have come about in our culture because we believe that human beings are made in the image of God so I wish I could say that religion is blameless we all know that terrible things have been done in the name of powerful churches that have vested their authority in their institution and have at all costs tried to protect institu their institution including by acts of violence and oppression there's no excuse for doing that in the name of Christ Christ the peacemaker rejects that utterly but nonetheless Christians have contributed to peace Martin Luther King a warrior for Christ espousing the road of peaceful protest as opposed to others like Malcolm X who thought that uh, violence was the only answer uh, Desmond Tutu in South Africa uh, who um, not only campaigned against apartheid all his life but after apartheid founded the Truth and Reconciliation Committee there and 
I was an inspiration in ways to bring peace between communities that had sunk deep into hatred. The roles of um, Christians uh, who, uh, in the fall of the Iron Curtain in solidarity, uh, Lech Walesa, a devout Catholic, uh, that priest who was murdered by the uh, Warsaw Pact uh, regime, uh, they, well, they sparked off the collapse of communism and broke down barriers that formed the Iron Curtain. Uh, the ending of slavery by people like William Wilberforce. There's a plus side to all that. Let's see that we're part of that plus side. We don't necessarily have the opportunity to go off to some part of the world where there are deep divisions and breakdown barriers, but we can play our part in doing them where we are by the sort of people we associate with and befriend, by coming alongside people who are having a hard time, no matter what, their class, their gender, their ethnicity. But Christians are barrier breakers. But Christians are peacemakers. Christians are called to bear the image, to grow into the likeness of the ultimate peacemaker, Jesus Christ himself. So could you break down a barrier today? Is there somebody you could befriend? Someone you could come alongside? Someone you could speak to that no one else seems to want to speak to? That's uh, perhaps the hard part uh, of it. Sometimes we look at peacemakers and see them copying it from both sides that neither side wants to make peace, so they both take it out on the peacemaker. It doesn't always make you deeply befriended by people to be a peacemaker. But it didn't for Jesus either, did it? He came to make peace between people. Look what they did to him. How dare you consort with sinners and tax collectors and heal Gentiles and, and do the things that you do. You are a threat. So um, there can be scars that you are going to collect if you follow in the steps of Jesus as a peacemaker. But if you do that, you will be called a son, a daughter of the living God. And I think that makes it worth it, don't you? Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we give thanks for Jesus our peacemaker. Thank you that he's broken down that enormous wall that stood between us and you. And thank you as we think of other walls that have fallen like the Berlin Wall. That he also wants to see us break down walls with one another. Help us now to think of someone who is perhaps left out or not wanted or rejected because of their background, whatever that may, might be. And help us to pray for them now. And to reach out to them in Jesus' name. Amen. Can I just say thank you to those who have been reaching out to people in Zimbabwe who, where there is a famine in our Link Parish, St Andrew's Link Parish of Gwelachana. Um, it's been lovely to see how generous people are being and it's not too late to contribute to our Zimbabwe appeal. Details of how you can do it 
uh, should be on our Facebook pages and WhatsApp and so on in, in our weekly newsletter that circulates by email. So I'll see you on Saturday. Until then, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. <laughs>